This year when COVID hit and everything was locked down, I started to think about like, how can I create something out of nothing? Like I've done it before, I can do it again. And that's when I started thinking about the concept of creating an art gallery, but doing an art gallery is like a business model. And I just started painting and painting like how I had years before as an at-risk youth. Hey, what's up? My name is Yahoo, otherwise known as MC Choir Boy, and also known as Zion One. I'm an artist, a musician, an author. I wear many hats, and today we're at the Monterey Movie Theatre in Upper Hutt. And for the next month or so, I've presented this art gallery, which is called the Changing Faces Art Gallery. And today I'd just like to share a little bit about my story leading up to this point. From the street to the gallery. When I was a kid, my life wasn't that great. I can't really think of any good positive memories at that time and there was a lot of I guess negativity that followed me throughout the primary years so when I was about 11 I got told that my mum had about six months to live before she had cancer and she died shortly after that my life was like a daze you know like everything was out of focus basically that's the only way I can explain it it was like I wasn't there, you know. Yeah. The grief manifested itself into anger until the point when I got violent, lashed out and got kicked out of home. Basically, my father packed up all my belongings into some rubbish bags and told me to get out. So I'm like, I'm responsible for finding my own accommodation, finding my own work, but I managed to avoid the SIFS system by going to school every day. It was good that I fell through the system because I avoided getting locked up as a young person. School was like my safe place, and one of my art teachers, she became almost like a counsellor to me, but I didn't realise that it was counselling, so I used to go there quite a lot to the art room and just paint at lunchtime or whenever and I learnt a lot about art history and design. I moved from place to place, I was couch surfing and just staying at random people's houses. I moved about 52 times in one year. One day I was doing a paper run. And I seen this guy like coming towards me and he was pushing his daughter in the pram and he just started talking to me and then he said to me like if I ever need a place to stay I can come stay with them and that's when my life started to sort of change for the better. It sort of laid a foundation for me in terms of thinking about my future. They counselled me and he was one of the key people, I guess, in my life that sort of helped me at that time as a young person. And he taught me how to freestyle, like rapping. And so the next part of my journey was I slowly started getting more into music. And that was, that was more about survival. So what actually happened was one of my friends was coming back from school through the Nanai subway and I could hear like all these coins like jangling in his pocket. Ching, ching. And I asked him what he was up to and he said that he'd just been busking in Wellington. They made a lot of money and so I started to think like, well I've got no qualifications, I'm like struggling at school, I need something to survive and so I started busking with no instruments, so I used to just stand in the subway and sing. Your love, it me. And I think people used to just feel sorry for me and like chuck coins in 
That's how I started making money on the streets and that's how I survived as a young person busking on the streets. I paid my rent in coins and then my grandmother bought me a cheap guitar and I started teaching myself how to play the guitar. And then it just built from there where I get invited to go to studios and started recording professionally. And then I got accepted into a touring band. We actually went to the audition as a joke to make fun of what was going on. But then I got the call back. And so from there, like I left like the hood and ended up touring the North Island, the South Island, Singapore, Malaysia, Sydney, Brisbane, and just did music every day for about a year. Came back, and then I was at a place in my life where things were coming together, and then one of my friends rang me up and said, hey, I reckon you should become a youth worker, you'll be a good youth worker. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. But then they sort of kept pushing with me, so I ended up applying for this job and I got it after about three times. The third time they were so desperate looking for mental health workers that they just hired me with no qualifications. And I got thrown in the deep end basically. I was working with the worst of the worst, you know, youth offenders and lock up or with them eight hours, 12 hours a day in a cell or you know, in isolation and you get to hear their stories and I could relate to them like on so many levels because of the experiences that I'd had in my own life. Some of their stories were like, I thought about it and I was like, man, my life was good compared to these guys, you know. And then after I spent quite a lot of time working in youth work and mental health over a decade all up, I decided towards the end of it that maybe now was the right time to get back into study. So I got back into study by enrolling at a university and the good thing about the university was that it was in Te Reo Māori and in English. So at the same time I was learning Te Reo Māori and tikanga and things like that and I was also learning about writing and how to write stories and how to do research and that's when I started to write my series of books, stories of New Zealanders, like different teenagers similar to myself, the stories of these young people that their stories will never get told. I made the stories like real, really, really graphic and really sort of hardcore so that if no one had experienced those things, they could read about those things and be like, oh, this is the real New Zealand, you know? And I wrote about five books and then I put them together in one book called The Street Is My Marae. That's when I realized like, I wanna do something different with my life. I wanna try something new. So I went back to what I knew years before, which was busking. Hope. Look at the untapped potential of a young person. Find their strengths, what they enjoy, what they are good at. Art, music, dance, rock climbing, sport. Once they discover this, you can use their natural talents to formulate goals. If they don't have any, their goal could be to find some. Deep down, one must not lose sight of the light in the darkness. This hope has kept me for years. I knew my purpose or calling from a young age. I knew I wanted to help people, but at the time I didn't know how. It took a few teachers that showed a step to the right door. The reason that I stopped doing youth work and mental health support work is that I guess I became disillusioned with the system and I felt that the system was creating barriers and almost like the system was making people in a sense 
sicker than what they were then when they came in. And I started to put together this idea about mental health and social work and how can we do things differently? How can we be innovative? It's about encouraging people in their strengths and what they're good at, whether it's like art, music, design, writing, whatever it is, like taking their skill and turning it into something, you know, next level and that. And then this year when COVID hit and everything was locked down, I started to think about like, how can I create something out of nothing? I've done it before, I can do it again. And that's when I started thinking about the concept of creating an art gallery, but doing an art gallery is like a business model. And I just started painting and painting like how I had years before as an at-risk youth. And as we sit in the gallery today, this gallery, the vision of this gallery is about role modeling to other people what they can achieve you know, their ambitions, and I guess in a business sense, what can I do to think outside of the square after COVID? What can I do in terms of visionary thinking and using the skills that I already have within me, whether it be art, music, drama, being an author, whatever those skills are, your sport, how can I turn that into a business innovation. And that's what I'm trying to role model with this art. I want to show people that they can achieve their goals through their inner strengths that they already have. Your love, it covers me like a shine. And your kiss, it covers me like ocean. And your smile, it covers me like ocean.